Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Knitting Posse podcast number 26. It's uh, Monday, January 11th, and here we are again. I'm Laura. I'm Kate. I'm Kim. And I'm Laurieann. So um, we were just talking about it before we started taping that we are very, very close to 4,000 subscribers. And anyone who's watching who hasn't subscribed, if you're interested, please subscribe because we were talking about um, doing something fun to celebrate it if we reach 4,000. So um, that would be great if that happened in the next couple of weeks, if you're watching. Uh, like, subscribe if you like it. Um, uh, that's it, I guess. So we'll start with, um, what are you wearing, Kate? I am wearing, again, uh, my Forager sweater by Isabel Kramer. Um, this was a test knit that Kim and I both did um, in the exact same color. <laughs> and it is the Nature's Luxury Town and Country Cashmere Yarn. It's so yummy. It's a great weight. And Rich said to me the other day, you're going to wear that sweater out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, if you're going to spend that kind of money on yarn, you might as well get your cost per wear down, right? I definitely am with this one. So awesome. It's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Every time I put that one on, I forget. How, it's just so soft. It's so good. Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. <laughs> I Sam, what are you wearing? Uh, my turtle dove one, um, the one with the and wool folk, the left with the little black and white specks by Espastrico. It's my same as Kate. Like I'm, I, I'm in the negative. I've already made my money back on this sweater, but uh, mm -hmm. it's such a cozy knit. And the again, the wool folk left is, I'm I have a actually an undershirt on underneath this, and I'm not hot, but it's, it yeah. breathes. It's breathable and nice. It's a really nice weight. So it's one of my go-tos. Awesome. How about you, Lorianne? I am wearing one of my oldest sweaters and it's one of my earliest sweaters. And I don't know, it was a Vogue knitting pattern. It's knit in a Skissel, probably a DK. I hope it's coming out green. Mm -hmm. yep. There are so many problems with how I knit this. The neckline bind off is too tight. The who knows? Um, it's, it's, it was knit in pieces. I wear it all the time. Um, it's like, it's like wearing, it's a dolman. Um, I'm in there. It's a, a dolman cardigan, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I don't really wear it out of the house so much because of, well, because it's older, etc. cetera. But um, I, it is what I reach for. It's easy to cook in because my hands are free but it keeps you warm. It's a, it's a, I think it's a silk blend. Um, the yarn is by Skissel. Anyway, we used to have a yarn store in our town and I bought the yarn through the owner, but it's so old. It doesn't even have a project page. It reminds me 400 of projects ago plus. Reminds me of the Veronica. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It's a very drapey yeah. uh, yarn though. It's a little different uh, yeah. texture. So it's comfy. Yeah. All right. Um, this is the lighting is terrible, but I am wearing um, it's called the Lulu by Amy Miller. It is a obviously turtleneck. It's a bottom up. And I'm going to try to show you. Oh, it's hard to see, but it is um, has a high, uh, high, low hem. Um, it's got a sort of rounded. It's got an I cord um, edging. It's very hard to see. And I pulled this out at the bottom of a pile in my closet and I put it on and I'm like, God, I love this. Why don't I, why don't I wear this? And I realized that um, if I'm not wearing like my workout clothes, I wear blue jeans all winter long. And I am, you know, a little navy today. It's a lot. And um, I started looking online. I'm like, oh God, I really want to make one in another color because I think I would wear it a lot more, but it's um, Barocco Ultra Alpaca. I just, I love the design. I love the texture. I remember that I loved knitting it mm -hmm. and um, I might have to put that on a future list of, I need it in another color, but nice. we'll see. <laughs> I um, when I first met you or we first started knitting together. Yeah, I think it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like three or four years now. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, it's a really great sweater. It's really, it fits me well. It's comfortable. 
Uh, I just need it in another color, unfortunately, but. Um, okay, um, on to FOs. Kate, what you got? Um, I have one FO, but it is not with me. Um, I finished the Jaden uh, sweater by Isabel Kramer. It was for my son, Devin. He asked for a plain white sweater and he loved it. <laughs> so um, it has gone back to Boston with him. He left on Saturday and he was wearing it when he left. Um, so the Jaden pattern, I just wanted to show you a little picture of it. It has um, texture up at, up at the top and then it also had elbow patches on it. I just did it all in stockinette and um, it fit him really well. I used Valley Yarns Wachusett yarn, which is a blend of wool and cashmere. And it's really soft and it blooms beautifully once you block it, once you wet it. Um, so he was very happy with it. I was very happy with it. And that was my first FO of 2021. So. Oh, and that's probably a really affordable kind of um, wool cashmere blend too, or not? Uh, ish. Um, okay. If they do do the discount, um, so if you're spending above a certain amount, you get like 25% off. Um, I definitely reached that threshold. <laughs> that was beautiful. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, it was the first time he had asked me to knit him anything. So that was very exciting too. He's not allowed to grow or gain weight. No, I mean, he's not allowed. Well, there were a lot of rules that went with the sweater. You're not allowed to eat pizza or pasta in that sweater. <laughs> or anything with ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> and do not wash it. Bring it home. And if it needs to be cleaned, I will do it. <laughs> right. That's cute. <laughs> awesome. Can Can any FOs? That's it. Yeah. Um, I have two FOs and uh, one of mine is the Sunset Slouch. Can you see that? Yep. yep. And that's by Megan Babin. And um, we bought a kit through Wool and Honey. Um, I guess it was probably around Christmas time we saw the kit. And uh, the yarn is Hudson and West Weld. It was a fun knit. I knit this in like a day and a half, I think. It's just like, I just wanted to get to the next color and then the next color and then the next <laughs> color. And um, um, I, my uh, only thing I'll say about it is the wool, was, it's, a, it's wooly. It's scratchy, it's itchy, but it's, um, it was still really fun to do. Yeah. And I would knit another one. Um, I did give it as a gift. So um, she has a lot of hair, this woman I gave it to. <laughs> so I figured she won't be as a cheek close to her scalp. She's got some protection yeah. in there. So, um, and then I have one other FO. Hang on. Whoops. Whoops. Ooh, my rug. Oh my yes. goodness. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So it's done. Ooh. I just finished it this weekend and it's going to be, I have to wash, block it. I'll probably put it in the water tonight and soak it. I can't wait to see what it does once I do that. Um, Cause it's definitely an outer layer of material. It's not close to the body <laughs> wool at all. It's the lopey. So what, I, what I've heard about the lopey is every time you wash it, it gets softer. So, I mean, it'll definitely soften after the first one but you start to lose the long hairs that are scratchy. Okay. Get softer and softer. So you might wanna wash it like every couple of weeks. Yeah. And just keep washing it. I think it dries pretty quickly cause it's bulky but it's light. Right, it's airy. Yeah. Um, and I'll be curious to see what the floats do in it cause I did not catch any floats and they did say it, it would felt. But um, Ooh, it doesn't matter. I had to be very careful putting my sleeves in. It was like, because that's where the longest float is. It's, I think it was like 18 stitches between oh, you wow. know, the two black marks here. So it's like putting a bracelet on. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some people omitted those, but I didn't really care for the amount of times so I'm going to wear this sweater. Um, that I can, I can make it work. But I have I'm, those colors. Yeah, it's like that I made this and um, I, I could imagine this sweater in like a cashmere, like Clinton Hill cashmere. Or yeah, Wolf Dinah Coast. did that, right? Yeah. In the yeah. cashmere. When I own my own knitting yeah. store, maybe I'll do that. But <laughs> um, that's it though. Big first sweater of the year. Beautiful. 
Thank you. Yeah. Lorianne, how about you? How many yes, FOs do you have to into, share? Yep, I dove into some accessories, accessory knitting once I was finished gift knitting. This is actually my latest finished object. Uh, it's a hat. Oh, cute. It's, thank you. It's for my daughter's best friend. I knit her hat for Christmas, but it just, it was a little too small. And so I ordered some other yarn, which I'll show you in a bit, because my daughter said it had to be gray. Apparently the only color is gray. Oh. She owns about 12 sweatshirts and they're all gray. Um, so then her friend was over and she said, oh, I really like that yarn. Sage green is my favorite color. I don't know what it's showing up. It looks minty sometimes, but it is. Um, so the yarn, I actually stranded a skein, a strand of Surrey and a strand of a slub. These are both from, I don't have the band. Do I do? I don't know if I do. Um, I think I have it here. These are both from Yarn Habits. I won the slub in a giveaway last year and I bought the Surrey because I really like the Surrey. The pattern is that I, I used loosely the stitch count from Tin Can Knits anthology hat and it actually I used the Aran weight counts because it seemed plenty big but burst rather than a DK I thought a slub and a Surrey made a DK but I use the Aran it's fine I was so determined so next project is this one <laughs> um I was so determined that when this pattern came out I just I fell in love and I was in the middle of like gift knitting and holiday knitting so I wouldn't let myself make it but as soon as the holidays were over, I made it for myself. It's called Little Pine Tree. It's by Cozy Up Knits. I did everything according to pattern, sort of, except this motif was supposed to be a heart. I made it. Pom poms in the way, Lauren. You can I know. Uh, I made it a red nosed reindeer yeah. instead. So cute. Um, so cute. I love it. And I used mostly scrap yarn, other than it was, it's a DK pattern. Sometimes I held fingering double. Um, my ends are not <laughs> handled, but it's good enough to wear. And I ordered, it needed a cherry red fish pom-pom. So um, I love this hat. I work at a school, like a preschool and elementary school, a Montessori school, and I wore it and all the kids wore it and their parents were so excited. <laughs> so that's where I am with hats. There are more to come. I also knit some socks. I haven't knit socks and other than the one pair I think I showed recently. These are both from the Cozy Knitter 24 stripe advent skein. It ended up it was a 48 stripe skein. There's one, a third pair of socks that my daughter has that are shorties and now she, all she wants are shorty socks. Mm -hmm. like no shows. Um, so I just finished them. I haven't knit socks in a very long time for myself and so I forgot what measurements and recipe that I like. So these are a little short, they have to be blocked. They're fine blocked. These are a little long when I wear in the foot. When I wear and wash them, they'll probably tighten up. And I used a one and a one and a half. So I've been playing around with that and that got me sock knitting a little bit more. So head, feet, hands. <laughs> these are my Iveen, Aveen, we had a subscriber um, or a comment from Marie Short last time, help me with the pronunciation of these. They're a pattern, they're a mitten pattern by uh, Isolde Teague. We, um, the yarn is in Quinton Co. Owl in the colorway Tawny. I had no mittens. I never knit myself a pair of mittens. So I have a pair of fingerless gloves, but I didn't have mittens. And this is from Will and Honey, if I didn't say. They were really fun, quick for me. I, had, I went through a little selfish knitting phase, or maybe I went, came back to selfish knitting. Mm -hmm. More hands. So this is a pattern that I really just loved when I saw it, and I'd had it in my queue a long time, and I saw some more recent projects of it. And so I decided to dig into my stash and figure out what I was going to use to make it. And I made these mitts. These are the underwing mitts by Erica Huser, Hauser. And I made some modifications as usual. 
So these are knit in blue poussiere and cat sandwich fibers. I don't know if they're coming across color-wise correct. They're a light lavender and a and like a chocolatey brown, a little bit tonal. Um, that's the other side. They have a moon motif here, kind of a repeat here. This is a modification. I just felt that finger, full fingerless mitts were not super practical. Um, and I lengthened the cuff. I had seen someone had done this fold over and I really liked it. Um, and I learned duplicate stitch. So the orange under wings are done in duplicate stitch. That was really fun. And now I can finish my 2020 advent <laughs> socks because I know how to duplicate stitch. So that needs to be done. Those are hmm? I like those. They're really fun. I, I definitely recommend making them. This was my blanket for the year, my 2020 in 2020. 2020, 2020 in 2020. So it's 20 blocks that are 20 stitches by 20 stitches. It's folded in quarters here. I added the I-cord edge. You can see a, a string. The back is full of strings. I have not woven in the ends, but I, I did the I-cord border around the whole thing. That did not take as long. That was not painful. It was great, actually. I did like a side a day. So wow. Um, wow. I consider this done. <laughs> and I'm giving myself the year of 2021 to weave in the end. Great. Yep. And those are, those are my FOs. Wow. What what say, what's, what's that blanket for? Is it for a family room or for your bedroom or? I think it's going to be for my family room. Mm -hmm. I don't think I will put it in my bedroom. It's, I mean, it, it's every color. This was, my, this was really my stash down project. I used, I, one thing I needed, I meant to do, and I didn't get a chance to, I want to weigh it. I want to see how much, how many grams it's many. I mean, I used all this finger. It was, it's only fingering. It's only plied. It could be soft, but it's fingering plied yarn and it's nothing that's a single and very, nothing that has silk in it. There might be some that had cashmere, but generally they're wool, maybe wool and nylon blends. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy it's to have done it and that it's done. Impressive that you kept it up all year. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Well, there was a time where it was very satisfying to just have right a small goal each day, right. something right. to do. And then at Thanksgiving, I realized, I think it was a leap year, but 366 didn't make a perfect square. And that's when I had the 20 by 20, 2020 thing. So I finished the squares by Thanksgiving, put it away. And then after Christmas and holiday giftness, I said, I'm knitting that by cord border before the new year. So I'm glad I did it. I have no desire to do another one <laughs> like that. I'm done. Okay, so I have one sort of fake FO and one real FO. My, my fake FO, and I just don't think I ever showed it, is um, Spring Thing by Lisa from Espace Tricot, which I actually knit a while ago, but then never really finished putting on the I-cord edge. And then just today before we started, I was playing around with the fringe, which I haven't finished, so... That's getting close and we'll be ready for my spring thing. And then the other one that I made is one of my favorites. Um, I follow, I get emails from um, the Yarnery. I don't know how I found them. They're in St. Paul, um, Minnesota. And I love, um, they send out emails. They have great projects. And um, there's a woman who lives in St. Paul Teresa Gaffey, and not all her patterns on Ravelry. This is not on Ravelry. So this is the Clements Revisited. I'll show you the Clements Revisited mm -hmm. scarf. And it is knit um, lengthwise. You cast on 400 stitches. Ooh. That's a fun, a fun <laughs> cast on. And then it's just a four by four rib. And I found this beautiful, beautiful yarn. And Kate, I can't remember how you say this. Ching fiber? Ching. Ching fiber? Yeah. Um, 
this is all folded up. I store my little labels inside the ball of yarn. Um, it's their Yak Single, which is merino and silk and yak in a col color called Pla Lingo. And it's, was that up for long enough? I'm sorry. Yep. Pla Lingo. And it is this beautiful, oh gosh, there's just so much going on, but it's all in the same sort of color weight. There's pinks and greens and grays and blues, um, and then some dark sort of maroon. And this is just so yummy. And uh, what, one of the things that drew me to it is this really cute twisted um, fringe at the end. Uh, I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. So. How long did a row take you? Yeah. <laughs> a long time. How many Where baseball games was that? <laughs> yeah, wish baseball. <laughs> but if you see, it's not that many rows, you right. know. Um, it was actually really fun to knit. And, you know, obviously you could put down in the middle of a row easily or whatever, but um, I really love it. So it's pretty. All right. So we are on to whips. Kate, you're obviously working on something. I am. I'm <laughs> actually working on. Oh, da da. Sunset Slout. Um, it's by, again, by um, Megan Babin, who is one of the Hudson and West um, uh, co owners, I guess. Um, and uh, Kim motivated me to start mine. So I am very close to being done. I'm on the last color change. And then I think you go back to the main color for just a little bit at the top mm -hmm. and then I'll be done. So that is what I'm working on. I also am working on in my beautiful bag, um, the old school sweater by Vera Velmaki. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And this one I am making, and I don't have the tag for it, in my um, Cashmere People Kashgora yarn, um, which I got from Port Fiber in Maine. And the color is just, I don't know if it's showing up, but it's so green. It's beautiful. I think it's called Evergreen. And let me see if I can spread out. I finished one part of the lace. I don't know if you can see it, the pattern there. Yeah. Um, but it was in timeout last night because I messed it up. And so I fixed it this morning. So it's back on track. Did you mess up because it's hard to knit that in the, at night in the dark? No, I think I just messed up because I wasn't counting properly and trying to watch a TV show at the same time. <laughs> it happens. After knitting Devin's white sweater, I got to say like this and the dark um, hat are a little, a little tricky for my eyes. <laughs> so I've been, I've been turning on every light in the living room and I have my, uh, my neck lamp that I wear, exactly. the headlights. Um, the, the I need to get that. Me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. it yeah. looks like headgear when you had braces. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or you can wear it that way if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I put this on and I work, walk around the house with it, the dog barks. Oh. He, I don't know what he's like. What the hell? That's <laughs> so. Well, it must put light on the floor, right? It puts light on the floor or a reflection, like in a window, and he's like, "Somebody's out there." I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get one of those. Yeah, yeah it's really uh, great. Mine's on the charger right now because yeah, I, and that's the other thing. The charger is great. Like yeah. it's a what would you call it? A UBS, a USB. Yeah. Uh, what UBS? A UBS. Okay. UPS. USB. UPS. UBS. It's one of those U's. <laughs> yeah. It's not an actual battery. So just stick in. Yeah. Yeah. Double A. Whatever. Whoops. Right. Right. Um, so that's nice that you can recharge it. Yes. So those are my two um, whips at the moment. Nice. Okay. Kim. Oh man, I can't believe I'm doing this, but I have a, a new whip. I'm going to talk about it while I finish up one row. Ah, sorry. Pearl Soho had a sale. And so of course I'd buy something, um, but it was only on the Pearl Soho brand. So I, I, 
had had in my queue for a long, actually it wasn't in my queue, it was in my favorites, Julie Hoover, the Parker. And it is a <laughs> knee length cardigan. I know. Oh my God. I'll show you a picture in a second, but uh, there's no pressure. I put no pressure on myself for this. Good it's going to get finished when it gets finished and hopefully it will still be in style. Um, <laughs> Cause I just, I almost done four more stitches. It's, and I'm just going to uh, point out that Kim's tall. So knee length. Like, <laughs> 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 what are you, you five, ten, five, like, eleven? Floor length for most people. <laughs> That's funny, Laura. It'll be like your 2020 blanket <laughs> that Lorian <Marianne> just did. <laughs> I've been putting like a year limit on it. So that's it. It's very Oh pretty. my gosh. It's, and it's beautiful. got like a fisherman's collar here. And it just, it's just going to be, it's going to take forever, but I'm okay with that. I'm and assuming it's, it's worsted, right? I hope. Yeah, it's worsted. It is, um, wait a second. Is it worsted? Pearl Soho Good Wool undyed um it's really pretty it's like a hickory nut color Ooh, that calls it. it's really pretty and um yeah i'm knitting it on a size eight i had to go i did do a swatch because i, I didn't hope so i wasn't gonna knit this whole thing and not have I it knit. i would have freaking <laughs> cried forever and uh it i had to go up a needle size in it um so <laughs> it's almost done no. <laughs> In pieces, typical Julie Hoover. Uh, and so this is the back. I had a pretty little bottom up. Bottom up. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be, it starts with the back. Oh, I like that, that little ribbing will keep it from curling, correct? Yes. Yeah. It's yeah, a, nice. a fisherman's uh, rib. Um, so, which was great because I didn't really have to pearl anything on that. But the stockinette's going to take forever, but I don't care. I nope. want it along. It might be like Lorian's coat. Like it might be like never leave the house and it's just cozy coats, but get a lot of love and wear. Yeah. I'm just gonna, it's, I'm just gonna do it and see. And so if I don't show it to you in the next decade, <laughs> you might remind me. I know. Julie Hoover. I'm gonna I'm, I did it again. I hate that woman. No. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. She's lovely. That's it for now. <laughs> That's going to be it for the next five episodes. Yeah. I will not be monogamous with this. Yeah. No you, yeah. No way. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Lorianne, how about you? So I started another pair of socks because my daughter's kind of now begging for more shorty no-show socks. These are knit in. Felici. So when we get to acquisitions, I'll be talking a bit more. I've never used Felici. I've never knit striping socks. Hmm. I think. I Well, I lie. I have. I don't own them anymore. They didn't wear well. This is Felici and the colorway is called Chelsea. Uh, Felici was on sale. So I acquired a bit. Um, Those are great colors. Yeah, the, these are actually all the colors. So I did not, I don't, if you knit, if you're a, um, watching us and you've knit Felici, I don't understand how it does, like, does the color go down, like through the, through the colors and back, or does each, does each one, I, like, I don't know how the colors repeat. Um, often I have, what I typically do when I knit, when I wind a skein of yarn, especially hand dyed skein of yarn for socks, since I haven't done the sock video yet. There's so much to say about socks. Um, I actually wind the yarn, especially an indie dyed yarn. This is not. Um, and I start both socks from the middle of the skein because one end of a skein can be dyed very differently than the opposite end. And I have a pair of socks where that's the case. Um, I love them, I wear them, I don't care. I'm Wait, how do you pick. pull both from the middle? Do you do two balls, you say? Yeah, oh, well, okay. because I knit two at a time, magic yep. loop, always. Yep. Yep. Uh, and these, my preferred method is toe up. These are on a one and a half. Um, I think I'm liking the fabric I'm getting on the one and a half better than the one right now. These are 48 stitches. I could do a one and do 56 stitches. My daughter's foot is generally the same as mine, a little bit shorter. I like the after thought cut in heel. The Kirby Werby video is pretty much what I do for those of you interested. Um, these started, I started, it's, I think it's called a wedge toe. I started with 12 stitches. 
using Judy's Judy's magic cast on. That's what it's called. Uh, so these will be shorty socks. Bleachy balls are only like 50 grams anyway. So I have to see what I have left, but I thought if I started at the green, they'd go in both directions and I wound one skein in the opposite and then how I took it off and I probably shouldn't have done that. Anyway, she doesn't care. Like I said, they're no show. You're never gonna see anything, but she really likes them. So those are in progress. The other thing that's in progress, let me make sure I show you the correct side, is my pink velvet cardigan. Mm -hmm. So let's see, can you see that? Oh my goodness. It's not showing up pink though, Lorian. Okay, well, sorry folks, yeah. it's pink. I don't know what else to tell it's you. A it's a light pink and a darker pink. Very pink, yeah. it's getting blown out here. Yeah. So it's a dark purpley pink and a very light pink. Um, and this center bit here is where I'm adding the steak where I've added the panel to steak. So I'm going to cut the sweater here. The, the sweater is designed as a pullover. I've knit the pullover. I love the pullover. It's by Andrew Mowry. Uh, and once I knit it, I kind of said, this really could be a cardigan. And I, once I organized my sweaters in my closet, got rid of a few this fall. And I realized I didn't have much pink. So I bought yarn for two pink sweaters and decided this would be one. The, once again, the Surrey. So I use Surrey held double in my pullover. That's what I'm doing here. And I'm using the same Surrey as I used in that hat by Yarn Habits. It's a one of a kind pink. I think she's got all of her yarn like heavily discounted right now. So you can check out her website. Um, what else? So. I've done this twice, I think, before, where I've taken a sweater, I've done, where I've taken a sweater that's designed as a, a pullover. I've done it once. I did it with the Guthrie by Caitlin Hunter. To me, I looked at that sweater and I said, that to me is a cardigan. It's not a pullover. Um, and I converted the pattern. Um, the thing that I learned doing that, though, is you really need to look at the motif itself and figure out where you're going to break it. Uh, you need to look at your sizing and then see if, so I actually had to add one extra stitch so that my motif was perfectly mirrored itself on both sides. Um, this is a fairly narrow stitch count motif. So it wasn't, so adding only one stitch was pretty reasonable. Um, and then that stitch is just sitting in the back now that I've divided for the sleeves. It's always hard to see on the needle. Um, I might add, as I did with my pullover, I might add a little bit of the pattern, the motif pattern to the sleeves. I did that on the cuffs before the cuffs. I guess one question I have, I don't know what you guys think is, should I put buttons on the button band or should I just make it a band? Or should I, and maybe I need to wait until I steak it and cut it open. It yeah, could yeah. be very drapey. Mm -hmm. um, this, so the yarns, I'm, I think I showed the Barocco, I'm using ultra wool fine. I'm knitting this on a three. Oh, who wants to knit a sweater on a three? Um, but it's a really, <laughs> it's a light fingering. So it's taking a while. Um, it probably, it could be knit on a two also. But um, the, I got the gauge on a three-ish, yeah. The gauge is just in stock in it. It's not in the barrel. So I don't know, I guess I'm curious. Do you think I should put buttons on it? I think it's gonna be a looser, drapier body based on how my cardigan turned out, but I didn't use these this uh, Barocco wool. I used something else. I so, think it really depends on how you think you'll wear it. And I'd wait to, wait to steak it and then decide. Yeah. yeah. See how it hangs on you. See. Yeah, I kind of yeah. like um, a button, like one button at the top, just to keep it closed, but not be closed all the way. But maybe I don't know. I have cardigans that don't have buttons, and I have the one, ones that do. 
But I, I agree. Oh. I think you're going to have to wait till you stick it and maybe do the one button band and see how it how it feels. Yeah. I need a long car ride because I really have no interest in knitting. Car ride to nowhere? Yeah. Yeah, just knit from around. <laughs> I swear, I knit for some reason, it's so strange. And I don't knit patterns a second time very often. Um, but this this took me forever on the first sweater. And this year, the second sweater, it, it flew. Hmm. Um, so those are my two whips. Okay. Well, speaking of sweaters on size three needles, um, I, this is such an interesting thing to me. I am, I think I've talked about it, knitting this pattern. It's called, is that right? You see that right way, right? Yeah. So Fidio by um, Fiona Alice, who's obviously a longtime designer. And it's Brooklyn Tweed. You know, they, they release some. Um, um their patterns like in collections and I remember distinctly when this collection came out wasn't that long ago I forget when it was looking through the patterns because I love Brooklyn Tweed patterns in general and love to I'm always excited to see what they're coming out with and I saw this sweater it was knit in Peary and it's three colors and I just went boop right past just didn't do anything for me and um then a little while later um they had a test knitter knit the same sweater, a two color version in loft. I don't have a picture of it, but um, I loved it. And that is what I'm knitting. I think um, Brooklyn Tweed kind of early in the pandemic, I forget what month it was, did a like a better together or yeah. whatever, where you could buy yarn and um, like you could assign a percentage to go to your local yeah. yarn store. So I bought it from Brooklyn Tweed and I actually had, um, I think it was like 20 or 30% of the price go to um, our local yarn store. Um, the color is Fossil and Homemade Jam. This is the back, I'm holding it up in front, obviously. This is the back and um, it, oh God, Loft is one of those yarns where you kind of, if you felt it on the shelf, you'd be like, Eh, and you might walk away it blocks so beautifully it's not like super super soft but it definitely softens it and blooms it's just it's beautiful and I cannot wait I'm on the back I'm sort of just started the back I'm not to the color work I mean on the front I started the front um and it's it's a little bit of a bear to knit on a size three but that's the sweater I want to wear a lighter weight you know, fun sweater. And this is a very sort of boxy sweater, but I'm very excited for that to be an FO. So. Not only are you knitting on a three, you're purling your color work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that a certain As, stitch that ha that's on it? Or? Um, yeah, oh, the other thing I was gonna say is, so um, Fiona Alice has a blog. And I think that when, um, and I'm guessing that when Brooklyn Tweed starts a collection, I think they put like something out as a theme. And I think that this theme of this collection was something architectural and she has a blog and I don't know if Brooklyn Tweed gave her the photos or if they were her photos, but she has some really cool photos on the blog of what inspired her. Um, this is just a one by one ribbing and then you alternate it. For, so you do, you know, I don't want to give too much away, but, and then it's so hard to see but then you you do a pearl stip on stitch on top and it gives us this cool little texture. And um, I just love it. I think it's so, so fun and cool, but it is um, knit in pieces. So I am going on the back purling, but I did kind of get into a rhythm with it because I knit con uh, with two, uh, yarn on each hand, I can't do it on purl. I don't, I've never mastered continental purling but I somehow managed to do it with one holding in my right hand and kind of went through it pretty quickly. So mm -hmm. I'm excited for that one. Nice. Um, acquisition. So one of the things we decided we would do since it's the start of a new year and everyone's going to have different interpretations of this is to kind of talk about some goals or what we hope to knit in the next year. Um, so we decided to do that kind of tied together with the last segment, which is what we call usually call acquisitions. And Kate, you're up. Are you ready? I'm ready. Good. 
Um, so my first acquisition was from Santa. He <gasps> <came in. laughs> and it's That's awesome. Enco box tote. Um, it's so nice. It's I don't know if you can see the color, but it's the green leather. Mm. No, it's it's reading black. Yeah, it's green. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's got the pockets on the outside, pockets on the end. Um, How did Santa know? There's a pocket in the mid, in the inside. What? How did Santa know? Because I sent him the link and the exact time he needed to log <laughs> on. He's like, that was getting caught. That was like getting concert tickets. <laughs> So then every time she had an update after he bought it, he's like, oh, he's having another update today. <laughs> he's getting the emails. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. There, it's reading a little green there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is a beautiful, rich green because you showed us a different yeah. photo of it. But. So anyway, I just love it. So I decided to put all of my acquisitions in it. Um, this is what makes rich so new. Right? <laughs> um, oh. Except for this. So my first one is... Um, this is a Knitter's Darning Needle Set by Brooklyn Haberdashery. And I won this on Instagram on a 12 days of giveaway from Caitlin at Porter Wool Co. And it's this little wooden case. And inside, there are these five little needles, all different shapes and sizes. Oh, those are nice. A couple of them are like very pointy um like sharp pointy and then a couple like I could use to weave in ends um mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the very pointy ones are for but um maybe it's really for darning like at uh, Lorian do you know no what do you mean the very pointy needle they're like sharp pointy I don't I mean I think I, I'm not exactly sure I've never darned the sock okay. but I mean, I had to sew on a, a turn <laughs> yeah. on today. I needed to use like a knitting, a sewing needle. Okay. So, so that's what, um, that's one acquisition. Another acquisition that I also won on Instagram. It's um, 2021 started off great. Um, it, this is from Sunday Yarns. Her name is Aria. Um, Sunday, S-U-N-D-A-E Yarns on Etsy. And this skein is called Caramel Macchiato. Ooh, it oh. looks just like that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, is it a fingering, a sock? It's a fingering, yes, yes. So I'm not sure what I'll do with it yet, but I have it. And it's, it's really, it's beautiful, like deep, like oranges and browns, and it's really pretty. That's pretty. Yeah. Okay, then I also um, couldn't pass up the Pearl Soho sale. And I looked through my sweaters and I really want a cardigan. Um, so I bought some of this. This is the Pearl Soho Mulberry Merino. So it's silk and merino wool. It's really soft. The colorway is called Wheat Flower. And this is for a cardigan to be determined later, but I got a sweater's quantity worth. Um, perhaps an Isabel Kramer cardigan, I'm not sure, but I just love it. Um, so that's that. Then uh, Webbs was having their year end sale. So, um, Lori from the Knitters League had knit um, the Arika cowl. I think that's what it's called. And I don't remember who it's by. But I think the Espostri Co. No, no it's no. not. I made it though. I know I, it's fun to make. Um, this is Kensington by Haiku. And I bought gray and black. I actually thought it might be a good gift knit if I need a gift knit at some point. So I bought those. And then I also wanted some kind of like a sweatshirt kind of sweater because as Rich said, I've been wearing this one around and I'm gonna wear it out. And I've been wearing it around the house like cooking and cleaning and wh whatever I'm doing. So I bought some Sublime Isabella 
yarn on the web's uh, clearance sale. And it's 55% wool, 45% cotton. And Laura, are you sitting down? You swatched? What? Well, I swatched because I wanted, to see swatch, the, but I wanted to see what the color was going to look like. Um, so it's very, very, very pale gray, like almost, a DK? almost white. Like a um, clay color? I'm sorry? Like a clay color? Yeah, it's, it's really, it's more pale than what it looked like on the website. Um, but I think for what I'm looking for, I think it's going to be fine. Actually, the pattern that I was looking at is called the Autumn League Pullover by Alexander, Alexandra Tavel. Um, Jody on the Grocery Girls made it. And it actually looks like a sweatshirt, that, um, the, the sweater. So I yeah, think yeah. you know it. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to make with it. Um, it is a DK weight. Yes. And it's really soft. So it has a nice drape too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll probably pull this out now. <laughs> Did you wash it? No. You're, What's the point of a sponge if you don't wash it? Yeah. Don't tell me wash it. What are you talking about? <laughs> What's the point of a swatch? It's actually the sweater has a lot of ease to it. So I, I'm good if what I'm- What if it grows? Does cotton tend to grow? It's 55% wool and 45% cotton. So I, I think the wool is going to help it so it won't. Okay. And if it, I'll just pop it in the dryer for five minutes at a time. I'm a big fan of the dryer. I actually put Devin's in there. Um, actually, I have it. This is the yarn that I use for Devin's sweater. Okay. Um, it was taking too long for it to dry. So I laid it out for like a couple of hours and I was getting impatient. So I popped it in the dryer for like four minutes and then I checked it and four more minutes and then I just laid it out. I didn't pin it at all. It just, I just let it sit. Um, but it's so, it's soft now, but once you put it, wash it and it's so nice. You can make him a matching hat. I don't think he wants to be matching. <laughs> No, he has a hat from last year, a gray hat. Um, and that's, um, those are my acquisitions. I actually bought um, some more yarn from Yarn Scout. Um, the shop, um, they're closing because of health issues. Um, and that hasn't shipped yet. So I don't have that yet. Um, but basically my, my goals for 2021 are as Kim said, brioche. And I, I know I say it every year, but this really is the year I'm going to do it. Um, we were on a, a Instagram live with the guys from Needles at the Ready podcast. And Ray and Kevin said that they wanted to try brioche. I, I think it was both of them. I'm not sure. Anyway, I texted Ray and I said, I would like to invite myself to do the brioche hat knit along with you. And he's like, great, that's perfect. So I think I'm, I'm really going to do it this year. And the, the pattern that we're thinking about doing is DK. And I actually went and looked at my stash today. I don't have a lot of DK in there. So I may have to get something for that. Um, also, my other goal is sweaters that I will actually wear. And I think I've been much better about that, especially this past year. Like I actually put it in my queue and I wait on it. I, I don't do it right away. Well, other than this one, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I think that helps to kind of, you know, you got to let it set for a little while. And if I still love it, then I go ahead and, and knit it. Um, another thing is to make a useful stash. I feel like I have some stash. It's, not a lot of sweater quantities. I feel like I always need to have a pattern before I buy a sweater quantity of yarn because otherwise I kind of get lost sort of. So um, I like, uh, I'd like to up my stash um, and apparently I need some DK. <laughs> um, and then, are you ready? Wait for it. I may do some socks. I think, oh. I know, I know. Devin and Rich, I think, would really love hand knit socks. Um, they don't know it's a possibility, so I hope they don't watch this episode. <laughs> they won't get this far. <laughs> no, they won't. They won't. Um, 
but some of the students in my knitting class have been asking about socks. I'm like, I don't do socks. <laughs> so Lorian, we may have to make that video for our fans that we promised them. And I may have to follow along and knit some socks. But if I do them, they will definitely be two at a time. Like I do all my sleeves now. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see. That, that's not a goal, but it's a maybe. <laughs> And that's it for me. Awesome. Busy. Yeah. Year. How, about, how about you? Um, so this was my this was my acquisition was the <laughs> car coat. And um, but I didn't buy anything else. So I'm I'm similar to Kate. It's um making sure I only knit things that I'm going to wear. I'm sure there'll be a few things along the way that I get sucked into, but that's okay. Um brioche. And if it happens, it happens. If it, none, none of these, if I don't make these goals, I'm not going to be too upset. Or if I break the goals, like yeah. I'm very flexible with this. I've got to be realistic about it. Um, there, It's fun to think about. Uh, yes. Yeah, so definitely I'd like an, um, to, oh, this is my, I am going to make this this year. The petite knits, uh, no frill sweater. You've That's probably years. <laughs> Talk about things being in your queue for a long yeah, time. I like that one. Go Fine. ahead. Do it. It's, it's been 10 years that it's been in my queue. <laughs> so that's going to happen. Um, that's about it. I really, you know, keep on knitting, keeping me happy. If I knit it, if it makes you happy, that's it. Awesome. Okay. I, um, I'm going to talk about some acquisitions first. So I'll talk about this one first because this is something I won. I was a runner-up winner um, because the winner did not claim the prize oh, from an Instagram that. giveaway. I was the second name drawn from Embroidery Elephant or no, Embroidered Elephant. She's actually in the UK. Uh, and it was really lovely, Kimberly. And her giveaway, she makes bags. So I won this bag, which is oh, hot yeah. chocolate themed. And I think it has little sprinkles inside. It has... Ah! A bunch of my scraps inside now which I can't see so I'm not going to keep them in this bag but um and it also included a skein of yarn from Lazy Sunday Yarns Ooh. which was called Elf Elf You Elf Yourself <laughs> so that, and that's uh stock 75.25 so that's fun and then it also included um winter pine self-care kit which was bath bath salts and body wash and hand cream in pine winter pine so that came from england that was pretty awesome so i really i just wanted to get that in um i also i also did win another instagram giveaway i won a, a, a credit to chrysalis yarns uh she's out of texas and so i'll talk more about that when i spend my credit um I, gifts that I received, because my husband re similarly received a link, was <laughs> I received a Chelsea, I know, don't fall off your seat, a Chelsea Lux from Chelsea Yarns duet, which means it is her cobblestone, which is a slub, and mohair. I, this, I love this color. It's called Caramel Apple. It was my favorite color from her 2019 advent, and I just kind of said, all right, get me this, this'll, this'll be a good thing. Um, I, these are like the rusty brown colors and, and greenish are, are my colors. I, I was probably also like fresh off of watching Emily in Paris thinking, and she had a beret. And so I've just been holding it for now, but it will, it'll, it'll be knit this year into probably a couple of hats. Uh, okay, next. If you watched our last video, I showed you some things, something that I knit for our house for the holidays. And I just felt really, I've knit a few blankets, but generally I don't like, I don't have a lot of like knit pillows or things like that for the house. But I just really loved that I did that. I, I loved looking at it. Um, and so when some yarn came on sale locally, I thought maybe next year I will knit stockings. So our local Michaels had these this on sale, which is 
Loops and Threads, Eco Cozy, Eco Duyer. Um, this is a gray, like a charcoal gray, and this is a, a bright cherry red. They are, it's, it's loosely plied. It's a thick, like a bulky. Um, I have seen a few patterns for like a cable stocking. Um, I'm not even sure I really want to use red, but it was there. I have three of these. I also, my daughter goes to dance in a different state. We live close enough to the border and there Michael's has very different um, yarns than the one in our town. So I also found in there, Lime Brand uh, Wool Ease. This is a cream color, just a cream. And this is like a nice green, a dark green. So I could see doing some stockings in these. Once again, my husband's like, why would you bother? I like our cruddy stockings. Okay. I also got a gift. A gift <laughs> means I directed my husband to the link of this. It's Rowan Felted Tweed. It's a DK. It's, what's it made of? Nothing that I could see and read in this lighting. Anyway, this is gonna be an Adelphi sweater. It is a V-neck, a basic V-neck sweater by Martin Story. One of my absolute favorite ponchos I've knit is Madison. It is by Martin Story. I don't think I've knit anything else from him. I don't have a ton in my wardrobe in this sort of camel color. And I do not own many or any, I think, winter V-neck sweaters. So that's on the goals list. So I have a sweaters quantity now of this. I also wanted to show my, oh, I went to mention because I'm finally blocking my Radvent row, which is a pattern by Amba O'Brien. I used my Playful Day mini skeins uh, for Advent on those. I have 24, 24 squares as of today blocking uh, before I stitch them together. You stitch them together using single crochet. So one of my goals this year is to learn crochet and knit a crochet stripe blanket. Uh, what the other Advent that I got was from Hub City Fibers. I'll show you her label, but I'm going to show you them all at once. It was a five-day Advent I feel like I haven't figured out what this is gonna become, although Lillian, who's the dyer of Hub City Fibers also gave a couple of patterns in with the skeins um, suggestions. It's Corydale Chunky, so it's quite thick. It's 110 yards. I feel like this says something about color work, maybe with white or with black. There's a bright pink, a red, a gold, a green, and a teal. Um, I love her dyeing. Okay. I'm getting there. Uh, Knit Picks had a couple of things on sale at different times. They had a um, luxury wool on sale. I bought some more of their Capra. Mm -hmm. Oh, these colors. This is like a, well, I don't know what they call it. Hemlock Heather. It's a green Heather. And this one is called Moonstone Heather. It's a gray. And I have two skeins of each. Um, there's a chance my husband will get a hat. This gray was what my daughter's friend's hat was going to be, and she chose something else, so fun. Um, I also decided I really wanted to try, I've been curious about Ruby and Rose's yarn. Her name's Addison. She's like 16 or 17 years old, and she has this huge business and huge following. Really? So I was curious. I wanted to try her yarn. She had a, her Christmas colors in a mini skein set. And I decided to go for that. And I got them in her rosebud base, which is very velvety. It's 85.15. Oh, back to knit picks. So when the girls here started talking about maybe knitting socks and the leechy went on sale, I was like, oh, that's a sign. So this might have ended up in your holiday bags if, <laughs> if I'd received it in time. And now Nora wants it. So um, the, I got five colors. One was an already a whip. This one is called Cabin, something Cabin, Rust, oh, Time Traveler. This one is Rustic Cabin. I like these colors. This is something about the wall, beyond the wall. I think I'm going to turn this one into a, some mittens, I think, for kids. So I don't want to say who for yet, but I'm pretty sure some kids, children's mittens. This one is called Aquarium. It's fun, bright greens. 
And there's another rustic cabin. Okay, that's the Bellici. Getting there, getting there. Okay, this I couldn't show you last time because it was part of my gift from our friend Pat of a knitter satchel. Uh, and I was supposed to open it at Christmas apparently, but she let me open it. She told me to open it the last night of Hanukkah. So these are two skeins of Woolberry Berry DK. This, this one is called Berry Tart. And this one is called Ranunculus. Mm. Mm. So I've been really curious about her yarn. She's constantly in my feed. I think I might eventually need a sweater quantity, but not until I knit the seven sweaters I planned for the year that are my goals. And then the last thing I, oh no, second to last thing I wanted to try was Leo and Roxy. I know I mentioned it. I have to shift. Sorry, folks. I'm in my bedroom because my usual space wasn't available. Um, one of the things I mentioned was like a mystery bag or a mystery skein and Leo and Roxy yarn, we keep hearing about it from our Canadian podcasters and friends. So I know all the colors are kind of funky here. Anyway, this one is their 8020 sock. So they did a mystery. You didn't know what you were getting. It was like 15 Canadian, no, 20 Canadian. So it was like less than 15 US. I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna get, that's a sign. I took it as a sign. This one is called I love what they say, 80 merino, 20 nylon, 100% good vibes. This was from their April 2019 sock club. It's not coming out. It's a lot of purples. Um, this one is their MCS. So it includes some cashmere and silk. And it's called Eat Your Algae. And this one has no anything on it, but it has a lot of colors. To be honest, these would work pretty neat together, I think in maybe like a Stephen West shawl, but I don't have any shawls, although I'm really tempted by the Hohe lightweight hipster. Mm -hmm. it looks like such a wearable, perfect, like clean your brain, one skein shawl. Okay. Last acquisition is, oh, so it's also a goal. I watch a stop, drop and knit podcast. If you're not watching her, she's relatively new, but she puts out content every week. Her name's Lisa and she goes by Lisa Vandervelt Flute. She wore a red love note sweater in like her holiday update. She has dark hair like me. And I was like, I have avoided the love note. I think I might need one. So that's my goal. And then Yarn Birds, who is a yarn store in a truck. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. Um, I think they're based in like Ohio, but they travel in their truck. Had a sale. They had magpie swanky sock. It's a dark red called the hot blooded. Uh, it's a MCN. I don't even know if this is actually enough. Anyway, this is supposed to become a uh, love note. You need to finish that by Valentine's Day. Yeah, that's, that's the great. idea, right? I'm, I'm in this like red and pink sweater mode. So, but, but you need to strand it. So I have Surrey on order. I'm not sure, it's, red is a tricky one because sometimes this one maybe the Surrey maybe come in too cherry and then I'm gonna need to decide, am I going cherry red? And I need to find more fingering. This will get into something. I would wear this. That's, great. that's a beautiful color. Mm -hmm. So um, those, are, those are my acquisitions. I also have, Wolf Oak Luft coming for a turtle dove. So part of my goals are to knit sweaters that everybody else found like winners. Like if it's that, if it was that much of a winner, like it's a winner, right? So um, the one thing that I'm not sure about is how low on that I want the sleeve to go. Yeah, um, but I'm, the yarn's on it, will be on its way and I'll figure it out. I, I think I can adjust if I'm not thrilled. Okay, let me just finish up quickly for my goals. I think I showed you all of my acquisitions. So my other goals is I still have to make 41 tassels. You guys are tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of talking about it. I'm going to do it by the end of January. I'm also going to stop setting deadlines for my knitting because it makes it really not fun to have a deadline. Um, but that one, I just, I got to push through. There's tiny tassels. Um, what are they for? I forget. They're for my Lune shawl, which I knit oh, yeah. in the summer. So that has to get finished. Um, 
I have to weave in the ends on this, but I'm giving on um, this the squares blanket. I also have a bulky weight habitation bro that I knit last winter. Go back to our episodes from last winter. It's there. I've never woven in the ends. So we've never used the blanket. I gotta weave in those ends. Um, so sweaters. I have this pink one. I have seven sweaters planned. The pink one, the brown v-neck, the turtle dove in white, and the love note in red. I also have chocolate brown yarn that I unwound from an old sweater. That was, I've showed the journey of that unwinding. I have to figure out what I'm gonna make with that. I also have yarn I acquired from Nutmeg Fibers that's bulky. The chocolate is probably a bulky to Aaron. The Nutmeg Fibers is a bulky. And I also have two summer weight sweaters. One is from Flower Hill Fleeces, um, yarn we received um, from her. And so that's gonna be summer weight, that's a merino linen. And I also have a lightweight, like almost a light fingering to lace weight pink from Milano, Lamana. It's merino cashmere and gorgeous, but it needs to be knit on a, probably on a two. So that'll be sometime in the future. Um, I also want to knit a northeasterly blanket. I collected all the mini skeins and the solid color I want for that. And then if you haven't seen, I guess I'll bring it up on my phone. Um, I have a couple of gift knits, some hats, and a couple of the mittens I talked about. The last thing I'll show is Jessie May, Jessie Made, Jessie May Designs came out with, um, had a test call for, I don't wanna say this is a goal. This, is, this was an ask and my daughter's becoming a little bit more knit worthy. Oh, how can I get that to show? Can you see any of it? No, um, I know what, she, what it, let me see if I can get it. What is it? It's her latest post. She yeah. calls it flutter butt shorts and top and a flutter butt shirt. Um, she just did a test call and it will come out in February. I, I, yeah, it's just this very, it looks like it's for a little girl. It's, you know, it's like, it's almost like knit lingerie. It doesn't yeah. seem to have a purpose. And my daughter's 15. She's not wearing lingerie really anywhere. But <laughs> um, she's, be, I live with her, she's being kind. If we're getting along, that's a, that's a positive with a teenager. So, um, so that may be on the horizon as well. I talked a long time, sorry. <laughs> Are you done? I'm done. Okay. Um, I don't have a lot of acquisitions, but I do have goals and I have one thing to show. Um, I, ha I have to say I spent like the last week of last year and the first week of this year really going through my stash. Um, one of the things that I did that I was very happy about was, um, and I hope you can't read this, but um, I literally put together a list of projects that I have yarn for. Some of it's just yarn that I've had. I have so much yarn that I buy and in the moment I'm so excited. Um, and then I get distracted. I have knitting ADD, like probably a lot of us. I think my case is particularly bad. So, um, my biggest goal really is to knit stuff that I already have yarn for that I've wanted to knit. And it, it really helped remind me to go through and put it all down um, and to go to this list every time I need to start another project. I'm not gonna be silly and say that I'm not gonna buy any yarn this year because I just know that that's not gonna happen. The other thing that I did, um, and part of that sort of really getting organized and delving into my stash was I photographed a bunch of stuff that I knew I wasn't gonna use. I have yarn, one, um, I put it all in my stash, but I put it up for will trade or sell. Um, I have yarn that is in a silver bag from a yarn store in um, a local town that hasn't existed for <laughs> 15, 20 years. Um, it's been gone so long, I don't even know. And um, so anyway, I put it up, I photographed it. I photographed more of my stash that I'm going to use, but I also photograph stuff that I've had. I have a beautiful Tokyo um, shawl. It's an Isayer, Isayer um, pattern. It's beautiful. Every time I see it, I have the kit for it. I think, oh my God, but it's definitely one of those 
big, big shawls that I just don't wear. And it's the, you know, fingering, lace weight fingering held together. Yeah. It would take a long time and it's so pretty, but I just, I think I'd enjoy knitting it, but I don't think I'd actually wear it. So I, I put some stuff up for sale and I've actually sold a few things and I'm not really doing it for the money per se, just to sort of say, I need to get rid of stuff that I know I'm really not going to use anymore. So that's been really good for me. And then as far as like techniques and stuff like that, um, I don't know why I decided this, but I, well, I do know why I fell in love. It's so hard to see with this hat. It's called drizzle on the window and it's um, different size beads. They start from big to small and it's supposed to look like obviously rain falling down a window. And I just, I kept coming back to it, kept coming back to it. Um, and let me tell you, finding beads online is not easy. There's a few sites, but when you need three different sizes and I don't know anything about beads and I never really thought I wanted to knit with beads before this will probably be the one and only but um this is totally going to be hard to see but um there's three different sizes because you have to go big medium small and the drizzle um it was pretty challenging to find um I did end up finding them at garden of beading but I think the toughest one was the biggest one um did you try are, bead biz? which Bead biz. Mm, I don't remember. I, I spent a lot of time trying to find one site where I could get all three beads. Anyway, um, and it's a it's a pattern by Susan Rainey, um, and it's a sport weight. Um, she recommends a couple of different things. One of them was Sunday Knits. Uh, she recommended Angelic, but I got um, Sunday Knits Nirvana, which is merino and cashmere, ninety ten. And it's kind of, it's hard to see. Uh, it's just a really kind of beautiful grayish, a blue, but like a little bit grayish. And um, I'm looking forward to that. I have a feeling I'll be cursing and I need to get that little headgear light thing. Um, I have a, I bought a really tiny um, crochet hook so that I, I, I'm pretty sure, I haven't purchased the pattern yet, but I'm pretty sure that you pull the stitch through and then put it back on. And um, But I'm excited for that. And it's just a new technique. So it's a really pretty hat pattern. I, yeah. I just love it. And I'm, I'm not yeah. a bead person. I see beads mm -hmm. and shawls and I'm just not like a girly girl, fancy, frilly, whatever. But for some reason, I kept, I just kept coming back to it and kind of what you said, Kate, like if I think about it and I keep going back and I keep going back and I was like, I want that hat. And you know, hats are so fun right now. And they're so like all these hats, like you can buy all these hats with big pom poms and I see them and some of them are bedazzled or have messages on. I was like, well, I'm not going to buy it. I can make it. So that one just really stuck with me. And it's a new technique, which I thought would be a nice challenge, but that's my goal to knit from what I have for the most part to try. What I really need to do is subscribe from all these emails because it's so oh, yeah. Yeah, it's better, much better. I just looked it up too. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. And yeah. you, um, the pattern calls for just doing that on the front, but you can do it all the way around. And since I've got so many beads, I might do it all the way around. I don't know. It depends on how difficult it is. I might like that. Um, yeah. Isn't it great? I don't know yeah. why. It's just really strong. I actually love the one with the that's top. A, like that's that. a cute ponytail. Yeah. The top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the top yeah. That's beaded too. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. 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 And I looked at, you know, the projects, there were a couple of really cute ones. So actually I will say, ladies, if anyone wants to do it, I got beads. You got the beads. So you have to, together. Yeah. And, the, and the beads are cheap. Like it wasn't like a question of cost or anything. I think they were like three or $4 for each thing. I mean, it wasn't like a big deal. It was just hard to find exactly the same what I wanted. But anyway, I'm really looking forward to that. And I actually kind of really, I might do that after I finish my video because- yeah. Otherwise, it'll have to wait till next winter to wear it. So you can wear it with my cardigan when I get that done. <laughs> I'm not. Will it match? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, that I don't know. I think we went a long time on this one. I hope you're still with us, but um, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, please don't forget to um, like and subscribe. We'd love to hit 4,000 viewers. I can't believe I'm even saying that out loud. Like when we first started, we were like maybe 10 people will watch. 
maybe a hundred, who knows? And um, it's so nice. So it would be really fun to reach uh, 4,000 viewers. And uh, it's not, we're still doing it. So. Yeah, yeah. Do <laughs> like not, no. yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. But we will do something to celebrate. We'll do a giveaway or something like that when we reach 4,000 subscribers. So um, hopefully we'll get there fairly soon. So Happy New Year, everyone. Happy Thank New you. Year. And Thank um, you know, in the comments, tell us what some of your goals are for the year, if you want. Yeah. I love, 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 love getting the comments and reading the comments. So um, yep. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Bye.